God. Amen. Welcome, everybody, to the house of the Lord in Dixon, Tennessee. Glad to have you this uh, fine day. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful that uh, we had no damage here at our house uh, yesterday, and Gary and Paula and her, Paula's daughter and her husband, uh, their house didn't uh, have any damage, so we're thankful for that, and I believe everybody here came out okay. And uh, But we have a lot of people that are uh, really hurting this morning in our area, in the Dixon County area and the Nashville uh, uh, area. So be remembering them today as we go through the service that the Lord will provide every need and that uh, uh, those will be comforted uh, of those that lost life during these storms. Uh, but anyway, we thank God for his uh, safety and watching over us. Praise the Lord. And we, we, we pray that everybody else in the path of this storm, as it heads east, will uh, have the protection of the Lord upon them also. I don't know about Darren uh, Best. If, uh, have you heard from them at all, Gary? Uh, I don't think there was anything going on there, was there, honey? Not, nothing that was... No, okay, no, good, no good. Anyway, uh, remember now on the comment section of the video on uh, Facebook, uh, be sure uh, to uh, introduce yourself and to welcome the family of God to be gathered together. It's a, it's a wonderful place to gain strength, uh, everything that's happening in the service, but also uh, the fact that you can communicate with one another. Uh, have prayer requests, uh, let it be known. And uh, we have wonderful people that join us every Sunday that will be glad to minister to you and, and your need. Uh, so be sure to do that. It's a great way to fellowship in the Lord. Um, Jane Hernandez needs our prayers this morning. She has uh, uh, a very high uh, blood pressure. And, uh, and it's due, I, I'm sure, from she has an obstruction also in her bowel. So let's uh, remember Jane and believe God to touch her this morning. And uh, we love you, Jane, if you're tuning in today. And we want you to know that, that we're standing with you. Amen. And all the people are uh, that are watching the video today. Anything else that we need to take to the Lord? Uh, yes, uh, Evelyn Perry called Gary and Paula yesterday, and uh, was it yesterday? And uh, Sheila Harsh, Harsh that uh, comes with her most of the time to attend our services. Uh, Sheila is Evelyn's sister, and uh, there's a real tragedy uh, uh, in her life to where uh, her son, grandson, grandson has been killed, and uh, we don't want to give out too much information on the circumstances. We just need to pray for uh, Evelyn and for Sheila, especially. Uh, Sheila needs to be lifted up, I'm sure, at this time, and uh, just tragedy uh, strikes at times that we least expect it. So uh, let's uh, let's remember that whole family. Uh, today as we go through our service. Uh, we know the one that is able to lift up and to heal and to restore and thank God for the truth that we know that there is life on both sides of the river and uh, we, are, we are so glad for that and thankful that the Lord uh, has a sheet of grandson uh, in his hands and uh, that uh, he is going to uh, continue to grow on the other side. Uh, and and uh, I have no doubt but what uh, God will allow him to be blessed by our services, in fact, as we uh, go along. Because we are ministering to both sides of the river every time we minister. Praise God. Father, we thank you, Lord. And we're sending out your love and your grace and your mercy 
to each and every one this morning, oh God, uh, especially Sheila at this time, Lord, asking you that her family will all be lifted up into the presence of the Lord today. Peace beyond all understanding be upon them, almighty God, as they face this tragedy in their life. We thank you, Lord, that you are in the midst of them and that, Lord, you will comfort them. And we thank you for that, Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Praying for Jane Hernandez, Lord, to heal her body. Raise her up from this, Lord. God, bring her blood pressure down in the name of the Lord. May the peace of God be upon you, Jane, and may that bring your blood pressure down in the name of the Lord. May, may the covering of the Lord be upon you today. Oh, and may you be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And healed and restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for it, Lord. All these other requests, God, and, and all the ones that have requests on the comment section, we're asking you, Lord, that you will be with each and every one. Each one, Lord, is precious in your sight. Each one, Lord, is your child. And we thank you, Lord, that you're mindful of us. That uh, Hebrews tells us you are touched by our infirmities. Hallelujah. So we're asking you, Lord, to move upon each and every need. Oh, God, you are the great provider, the healer of our, uh, of our body, spirit, and soul. Oh, God, you're the one that is the resurrection. Hallelujah. And we thank you for resurrection life this morning, entering into each one. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Rejoice, I'm in thy midst, my peace.
was uh, talking to Bobby Jean this morning and uh, on her way to church, and she had her great-grandson uh, Isaac with her in the car. And uh, Isaac has uh, started uh, praying what he calls pre-prayers. <laughs> 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 and this is just getting you ready to really, really, really pray, you know. So uh, he starts praying and speaking in tongues and everything. And uh, the the little booger is really anointed. He really is. And uh, and all of a sudden, after a, a, you know about five minutes of praying, he starts singing in tongues and in the spirit. And hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And it just tickled me. I thought, Lord, Lord, the kid is singing in praise and uh, really strongly anointed in it. But he told his uh, mom, uh, his uh, nanny, which is uh, his grandma, Connie, and Bobby Jean, he said, you know how I'm going to open up service today? And they said, no, what you going to do? He says, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> and I said, Lord, they're going to have a service today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But it's so wonderful to see God move on the different ones. And, uh, of course, Isaac has um, a lot of limitations mentally and uh, physically. Uh, but uh, God has blessed that boy. Uh, he's doing things that the doctor said he never would do. When he was born, they had to actually, uh, something went wrong inside the womb. And when they uh, uh, finally extricated him from the womb, uh, his brains had come out of his head. And they had to actually take his brains and, and shove them back into his skull. And so, of course, they didn't think he was going to live. And now he's, I think, uh, 12 or 13. And uh, and he wasn't supposed to grow any because uh, he had this uh, deficiency in his hormones. And the boy's uh, about six foot tall and uh, uh, 200 and some pounds, 237 pounds, something like that. God just always loves to show the wise how foolish they can be when they don't believe in the Lord. And uh, he's a miracle worker, is he not? And we're believing that for everybody. Let's sing 72 if we could. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood. Page 19, song number 72. That might be in, what are you, what are you in there, to have it uh, uh, lower than that. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood I will shall I shall
house with your glory. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, I shall raise up. He's going to raise you up today. day of your flesh. Amen. Glory. For my glorious body is eternal life. And I shall raise up. Thank you, Jesus. I shall raise up. sing 73 right below that song right below that one mm-hmm. what, uh, uh, what's the next key up what do you have? Sing it one more. 
more time. Amen. Let's praise him today. Hallelujah. We only praise thee. Thou hast reigned upon our land, the latter land, the former has brought forth this corporate Keep not the feast. I was going to try and find it so you could follow along. Uh, a little higher, Gary, than that. It won't rain. On your land, if you keep not the feast, and your man he can't stand in God's day of release, you'll have no.
feast, of course, is tabernacles that it's speaking of, and uh, it's a solemn warning from the Lord, if you keep not the feast, uh, it won't rain on your land, but if you do keep his feast, it'll rain, and uh, because the people could get tired and uh, melancholy and not stay uh, on the edge of what God was doing in them. So uh, he, he wanted them to know why they had to keep the feast. And uh, so, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, we're not beyond that. We're not beyond being held in judgment for not having kept the feast or ministering the truth uh, that we have, that we know. We can't allow people to uh, uh, shut us up and to cause us to not say what is true concerning the Lord and his plan for every man. So uh, that's the reason why, uh, to me, that is a solemn song because... uh, it does let you know uh, it's God's day of release and you're going free. Praise the Lord, Rob. You're going free in him. Praise God. And we all are. And uh, uh, when the plagues appear, we're going to have to have wine and oil. I don't know what it's going to take for God to get the attention of the world because you know we've got to keep in mind this is going to be put on a world stage one day a world stage God has to uh, get a hold of humanity and uh, I don't know what it's going to take for God to do that so I I, I just uh, want to let everybody know that just because your kingdom sons of God tabernacles, whatever else, uh, it doesn't exclude you from having to uh, be a spectacle at times, be uh, look foolish in the eyes of the world. Uh, our message isn't something that uh, <coughs> makes any sense to the natural man. The natural man cannot receive the things of God, uh, but it's been revealed to us by the Spirit so you know we uh, we we need to keep on keeping on, and not that uh, this is not the time for us to draw back. It's a time for us to take a stand, and uh, and allow God to. Uh, 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 that's another one that Charlotte wrote. That I guess I'm just going by what the Spirit's speaking to me today. Take a stand if you can, and hear this whole. Corporate man. Page 32. Boy, I'm right. All these songs came at about the same time. I see that a lot uh, in this book, in the song book. Uh, I see uh, that you can tell when God was speaking uh on a certain theme at that time. Uh, and uh, when Shart and I was writing these songs, you can tell that if you just go by one page or two pages, you'll see they all correlate with each other, it seems like, many times. Hallelujah. 127. Maestro. 
one thing that the Lord just dropped in my spirit. It has to be evident mm. in our life. Yes. It's not something that you can talk about all day. It has to be evident that people can see because they're watching our lives. And if they can't see, you know, the proof is in the pudding. If they can't see it, it's not evident to them. So it has to be evident. Yes, yes. Take a stand. Uh, maybe just a little higher, Gary. I'm sorry. Take a stand if you can. Hear this whole corporate man. Our Father does have a plan. Through his trump now in the land. Yes, he does. It's onward higher. Shall go. We cannot lag no be too slow. The marriage suppers near you know. Uniting body, spirit, soul. Take a stand if you can. I had my guitar. <laughs> Living. I don't know. I don't know if I can or not. I, I hope can, you I can. can. When, I, when I came in for two days, I had a reoccurrence of something that was like four years ago. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I mean, the Spirit of the Lord is so 
Lopez was a, a, a great minister of the Lord, uh, very anointed. I can do it. And uh, uh, what he, uh, he was some from the Sam Fife group, uh, which they were a lot of uh, closed line teaching, um, and they affected a lot of people, but uh, they had uh, such condemnation in their message. Uh, so when Frank started coming around us, uh, he started really seeing another a life, you know, another, another anointing. And uh, uh, he flowed in with us uh, for a lot of years. But he started becoming, uh, because he started going back to Sam Fife's groups, he started becoming more and more judgmental, and uh, and he told uh, Charlie Ryan that uh, no, no, actually he told us uh, that uh, he didn't believe in reconciliation, and we said, "Well, you preach it." He says, "No, I don't," and we said, "Yeah, you do." <laughs> We've heard you preach it, <laughs> and your songs that you write say, uh, say it. Uh, are, are you sure you don't believe it? He says, no. He says, I don't believe that. He says, and tell these women to quit wearing uh, tight jeans to these services. You're causing the young men to lust after you. So that was about the last time that we were together with them some, but we, we met together at Charlie Ryan's. And Gary uh, will really appreciate this. Gary, uh, Charlie had a radio room at his church where he did his weekly radio program. But it was also a straighten them out room where he'd bring in the ministry that uh, he needed to straighten out. And he'd bring them into that radio room. So uh, we told uh, Charlie... Uh, did you know that Frank Lopez doesn't believe in reconciliation? He said, oh, of course he does. And we said, no, 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 he don't. Yes, he does. I've heard him. I said, yeah, I know. We have to get Frank Lopez in the radio room. We're all going to go in the radio room. So <laughs> we all got in the radio room. <laughs> you got to know Charlie Ryan, man. <laughs> he was something else. And so he gets across from Frank Lopez. He goes, Frank. Tell me now, 
you believe in reconciliation, don't you? And Frank went, no. <laughs> and if I could describe Charlie's face when he said no, <laughs> oh, my Lord, he died a thousand deaths. He really did. He said, what in the world is wrong with you? But anyway, uh, God uses all kinds of people, all kinds. Of, you don't uh, have to have all your cards laid out the same as everybody else. If it's anointed, it's anointed. Amen? And uh, I've always loved uh, some of Frank's songs that he's uh, written through the years. Praise God. So, uh, and, and Frank has gone on to be with the Lord now. And uh, we, uh, we thank God for the impact he had on our lives and on others uh, through the years. Praise God. Anyone else have a song? Hallelujah. Every time I ask y'all if you have a song, I got one. <laughs> That's good because I don't. Uh, page 29. And uh, song 115. It'll be on two pages, 29 and 30. You're on the brink, brother. You're on the brink. You're on the brink. You're on the brink. So just stand still. Uh, one more down. This 
is the day when the chosen shall go free. You're on the brink, be not afraid. You shall walk in the plans I've made. So just stand tall, give me your all, and live in me. Swallowed up in victory. All of my death, that's my destiny. So that the second death has no power over me. Appointed unto he wants to die. Now judgment's begun. From him on high, a witness I'll be, I think me, no more dead in the street. Hallelujah, hallelujah, make it real to us, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. On the brink, amen, we're on the brink of a great event in the Lord, the greatest event that's ever been, hallelujah, hallelujah, the gathering of sons unto the Father, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, catching up, the catching up of sons into the Father, hallelujah, being harpazoed unto Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. When we brought that forth in Michigan, uh, everybody was going around harpooning each other. Uh, <laughs> they liked that idea. <laughs> Harpazled you. <laughs> but it's the truth. Amen. We're on the brink of something fantastic and marvelous. And we can't become complacent. We have to stay uh, yeah, on 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 the road, we have to stay where the spirit is moving. Amen. We can't uh, settle down into ourselves. We have to stay lifted up out of ourselves in Christ. Oh, hallelujah! So I'm believing that to happen uh, in our lives that we start uh, uh, gaining ground in the Lord in a new place in God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, lift me up on higher ground. Should be the last uh, chord we were in. And let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher place. a 
lot more verses of that song, but I don't have the uh, song book where you can find them at. But uh, at the church, I used to sing it every once in a while from the uh, song books that was left over from a, another congregation. And uh, uh, boy, they, they went right along with the message. A lot of your old songs, they didn't know what they were actually writing at that time. They were beyond them uh, where they were at. And uh, the Spirit would just speak things through them, uh, the songs of faith. I'll tell you, they really had some powerful words in them. Thank you, Lord. You keep, you keep turning your pages, but you don't give me a song. <laughs> if it ain't by the Spirit, it's not worth singing. <laughs> Boy, do I miss Bobby Jean. I'm telling yes. you right now, I'm missing her. broken out in a chorus. <laughs> I like this song. I don't care who you are. I like it. Uh, page 18 and number 68. It's got a deep truth in it. He is opening up the books of life, whose books we are. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let him open up your book today and, uh, and be that sure word. Uh, that uh, that is coming forth today. Amen. I'm opening up the books of life that all truth may be told. That sure word yet unwritten that my prophets did withhold. These words will resurrect the dead as before. preach on that for about two weeks. I don't know. There's a lot of truth in that song. Don't let these just be words to you. I pray you don't. Uh, there's, there's life behind these words. And uh, uh, you're the books of life that are being opened in this day. And out of your book uh, is coming forth a judgment uh, uh, as, as the uh, creation stands before uh, the judgment seat, but God uh, tempers my judgment and my mercy seat will bring forth this corporate man. So uh, the correction of the Lord is the mercy of the Lord, and uh, you can't have one without the other. So uh, I I'm glad that uh, we are... Uh, uh, coming together as as one, all of us, many different uh, uh, expressions, and some have a hard word and some have an easy word. Some are a more, uh, 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 you know, that God's going to get you for that, and some have more of a, a, a word that, that says, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. So uh, it all takes that in order to get the message of God across to his people. And I'll tell you, I don't have the message, uh, actually. The Christ in me has the message. Uh, 
And when I minister the message, it's actually not me ministering. It's Christ speaking through me. Amen? And all of you are the same way. Uh, uh, I, I, I'd hate to see what Brother Bob would minister because it wouldn't be very much. Uh, but when the Spirit of Christ moves upon us and, and he starts to speak through us, uh, then that's when the power is in the word. Amen. Gary, what you got over there? Hallelujah. Well, I would just, I guess I better get this. <laughs> you got a word? I, I was just thinking, yeah, uh, a little something here. Amen. I guess we'll stand up here. You may, I don't know if you want to look at the camera or not. I'm going to stand up here. I'm going to change that. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Uh, now, I, you know, uh, Bob was talking earlier, and we were singing some of the songs we were singing about uh, it won't rain on your land, you keep not the feast, and uh, my mind and the spirit begin to go to some some scriptures and some things. How that we are in such a time, a critical time of transition, yes. that we have to be very sensitive to the spirit of the Lord. Um, and I've shared on this particular scripture uh, some time back ago, but the Lord began to quicken something fresh about it. Uh, I believe it's First Kings thirteen. It talks about this prophet and it does not give a name. Uh, he's just an, a, a young guy based on the way it reads. The Lord sent him into the, uh, the tabernacle or the temple. I believe it was at that time. And the Lord uh, said, basically he goes in there and he starts giving the word of the Lord that things were changing and was not to go back the way it was. And the Bible said that that God sent fire down and, and hit their altar and split it, which is type and shadow of him changing the worship, changing everything you know and believe and understand about God. It began to change. Yes. And the word of the Lord said that when this happened, that uh, the, the, the uh, priest came and began to put his hand forth to it to stabilize or to stay and keep the old way. And God smote him with leprosy. Yes. And he began to cry out to the young prophet, the young no-name prophet, that God would, uh, and I'm just recapping this real quick before I go into what I feel in my spirit, how that he, he said, you pray for me that God heals me. And the young prophet prayed for him, and he did pray for him. And God healed him. And he realized it was the Lord that had sent him. But the Lord spoke to the young prophet and said, you cannot eat with them. You cannot drink with them. And you must go back a different way. Don't go back the way you came. Everything is new and different. And the, the Bible said that when the old priest heard of all this, <coughs> he said he had told the king that he couldn't stay. The king wanted him to stay and, and, and eat with them and live with them and so forth. And, so on. and he said, I can't do it for God told me I have to leave. I can't even eat or drink with you. And the old priest that was kind of heading the thing up, he goes to him. This is all in first Kings 13. He goes to him and, and he said, God spoke to me too. And I, you know, I'm more experienced in this than you are. So you need to listen to me. That's kind of like the gist of what was being said. And so the young prophet says, well, okay. Cause you know, he was respecting the the office of the the old prophet or the old priest and he goes back spends a night eats and drinks with them and the next day he gets killed by a lion or something but my point is this the lord began to speak and he said i'm changing the way things are done and the, here's what the lord rather than putting a personality to that young priest which i I've, you know that's what we do we kind of read things a certain way the Lord began to quicken to me. He said, I've sent a fresh new word into the midst of my people. They cannot go back the way that they've came. They cannot go back and revive the old. Right. And, and the thing that, that 
we were singing that song. The Lord began to quicken this to me, how that it said, if, if you don't keep the feast, and if you read that in Zechariah around the 14th chapter, I believe it is, you find out that the, the Lord is saying, uh, you know, you have no excuses. Now, he begins, if you read that whole chapter, you'll find out that he says, if you're in Egypt or wherever you are, he begins to give all these things that people use as excuses for not keeping the feast, meaning you got to leave. And if you'll remember the Feast of Tabernacles, the way it worked was this. You had to leave where you were, leave your home, leave your place of comfort, leave where the things you're comfortable with, go to the city and build booths there and dwell in that booth for the time of the feast. And there were more sacrifices offered during this time than any other time. And the Lord is speaking a word to us right now. He said, I'm, I've sent a fresh word into your midst and I'm making you understand you cannot go back to the old. You cannot redo that old place anymore. Amen. He said, what I'm doing is this he said he said if if you don't leave your place of comfort if you don't walk away from everything you've held dear in the past and follow me and then that what john the revelator said he said these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth we cannot be attached to any to any revelation any doctrine any personality any anything we have to only follow the lord into the places uh, that he has designated for us i remember Years ago, I was preaching at a, an old Pentecostal church down uh, in uh, Dallas, I believe it was, and, and the Lord quickened something to me of how that, you know, uh, you, know, G, the, you know, Jesus quoted and he said, you know, in my father's house are many mansions and everybody gets all of these doctrinal viewpoints of that kind of stuff. Uh, and then the Lord quickened something to me, how that, you know, we're taught we're taught, and, and pick your denomination, pick your background, whatever it is. We're taught, if you give your heart to the Lord, you're baptized in the right formula, you talk in tongues or not, as the case may be, and, and you give your tithes and offerings, and you attend church, you do all of these things, then one some glad morning, you'll make it into heaven. Right. And once you get to heaven, then, you know, if, so if you've done all of these things, uh, and, and we understand, we understand that the Bible must be real, true, and fulfilled. So we give our heart to the Lord. We've lived right, acted right, spit white. We've done everything all right. So now we've made it to heaven. We're dangling our feet in a river of life. We're fishing. We're doing whatever it is you do up there some glad morning. And the Bible has to be fulfilled. And the scripture says, heaven where you are and earth shall pass away. What? Here's my question. Where are you going? Where are we going? Uh, but the Bible puts it this way, to, to follow the Lamb or wrap yourself up in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you, this is the only thing that we have to understand. It's not a doctrine, and I appreciate what Bob was talking about, about Frank Lopez, and, and we've known so many people that's not, that just like that even now. That they've got rules, they've got regulations, and the Lord is trying to speak a word that whom the Son hath made free is free indeed. Yeah. What are you free for? You're free to follow Him. You're free to put on His nature. You're free to put. This is yeah. keeping the feast. Yeah. This is keeping the feast. It's not going through a ritual. It's not going through something that, that this thing that God's requiring us that we keep the feast that we put on. He, that's what He said in the book of John, I believe it is. Put on therefore the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. Yeah. and that's where we get ourselves wrapped up in Him. We put on his nature his thoughts his mind uh, and, and and that what uh, uh, paul wrote in i believe in romans 8 chapter he said the whole creation is groaning and not just them but we also groaning waiting for a manifestation of the sons of god and we've missed entirely what that scripture means it doesn't mean at all like we've always thought of some supernatural glow in the dark something but it's the lowly men and women that put on the nature of the lord and that's a hard thing to do because when somebody gets in your face you want to deal with them when somebody, when life gets in your way, when things starts happening to you, we want to deal with these things. But the Lord is saying, look, what I do, what, what we are in the world, but we're not of the world. And what this, that what we've gone full circle now, and what the Lord is saying to all the deep uh, uh, kingdom people is put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put that nature on you. Amen. So, and, and if you'll remember, if you'll remember, Jesus' biggest headache when he ministered for those three plus years was the church. It was the Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and all these other denominations that was available to walk in and join in those days. And those were, those were his biggest headache. 
Yeah. And that's who our biggest uh, battle lies with nowadays is dealing with doctrines and beliefs and things that people don't understand. He said, I've come that you might be free from all of this stuff. Put on, therefore. This is keeping the feast. Uh, if we want it to rain. We want it to increase. We want this thing to change. How do we change people? We don't change them. And, and I believe, I, I think it was Bob that quoted, I want to say last week or week before last, I can't remember now exactly when it was, but, but he's quoting, uh, I can't remember who, who the, the source was. Was, it said, preach the gospel at all times and use words if you have to. And this is what, what I believe with all of my heart. You know, I've shared this before, and, and I don't even know why I'm uh, talking this way, but it, it wasn't even in my heart. But my mind began to go to, to my brother, and I've talked to him before. Uh, 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 Paul and I went down to see him here not long ago, and he uh, we were all raised the same. You know, growing up, we were all raised old Pentecost and everything. And, of course, when we got old enough to do our own thing, the Lord got a hold of me, and he went crazy and wild and romping and stomping and drinking and carrying on, which he did for 40 years or whatever. He just gave his heart to the Lord recently and joined a Baptist church, and that's well and good, uh, which I, it's kind of interesting. I get a few questions from him now because he says, that little Baptist preacher said he talks, he believes this in his name. I don't know. We wasn't raised that way. I don't know. I said, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said, if you guys can walk together and, and they obviously love each other, I said, stay there and enjoy it. But what I was going to tell you is this. He was, before he retired, he was the head of this maintenance department, had a crew there, and, and they were all a wild bunch. And if you've ever been around a bunch of crazy old men, you know exactly how rough some of these atmospheres can be. The Lord got a hold of him. And changed him. And he never said a word to anybody. He goes in there and he starts working. And pretty soon he's not participating in their dirty jokes and wise cracks. He's not doing all that stuff. And I, I don't know, several months went by. And his right-hand man came to him at a certain point. And he said, I, I, I want to share something with you. He goes, okay, what? Uh, uh, he said, last Sunday, I gave my heart to the Lord. And my brother goes, man, that's great. That's great. He said, but the reason I'm telling you this is because I watched your life, not what you said. I watched your life, and that made me give my heart to the Lord. And I thought, my God, here's these Baptists, and kingdom people can't even do that. And we ought to know better. We ought to know better. We ought to have a maturity about us to understand that, that our integrity in the Spirit comes from having the nature of God. You know, and that's, and if you want to know what the nature of God, it's not a mystery. It's not really tricky or hard. You just have to realize that the wording of this thing, I believe it's in Galatians 5, it says, for the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, so forth and so on. And if you want to put it in the proper perspective, the nature or character of God is love. And love is mentioned first because that's the foundation. You know, love, joy, peace peace. All of those things are founded on love. Yeah. They're all manifestations of the same character of God, but it's founded on love. You, you, you know, you can be, I, I've met, I've met gentle people. Yeah. I've met gentle, nice, sweet people. Uh, but in a circumstance, they'd take your head off. So, because there was no love there. God said, this is the thing that I'm requiring of us is that we put on, therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if this will make any sense or not, but this is the feast. This is what God was quickening, Bob, to me when you were singing that song. Yeah. Uh, if you keep not the feast, put on the, that nature of God. That's keeping the feast. Yes, why, is that, why is putting on the nature of God keeping the feast? Because it makes us leave our comfort zone. It makes us walk away from the things that we're familiar with in the flesh. Yeah. To walk into the depths of the Spirit of God. This is what, this is what changes people. It's not because we convince them we know the Scriptures or convince them our doctrine is more right than theirs. That's an intellectual thing. That doesn't change anything. Because someone smarter than you can come along and change their mind later. It's when they witness the integrity of God coming out of us. Yes. That's what changes people. Absolutely. Amen. I'm done. God bless you.
I've had the feast on my heart the whole morning also uh, from uh, a time during the worship and everything and the songs that the Spirit had to speak. Uh, the feast has other, uh, in the Hebrew, it also uh, is known as a feast of ingathering. And you know, that's what we name our meetings is ingatherings, to be gathered into Christ. The feast is where every man comes before the Lord. And uh, this morning is a feast of ingathering. And uh, not only are we gathered physically, but we're gathered uh, with those that are watching online. And, um, and we're gathered, in fact, I put that on the post uh, announcing the service this morning. I, I, I believe I said, let us come together and let the gathering be unto Jesus, unto him. And uh, that's what it's meant to be, a reaping and a gathering of all the things that, that they labored for uh, in the earlier part of the year. Uh, they brought it uh, together uh, unto uh, uh, the Lord, the first fruits of everything, cattle and fruit and grain, uh, everything uh, was to be given unto the Lord uh, as a uh, tithe or as a um, uh, first fruits unto the Lord. Uh, I wonder how many times we still do that if we think of the Lord at all at these times where, like our children, uh, it's special to be firstborn. Uh, but it's hard being a firstborn because all the other kids uh, look up to you and you're depending on that firstborn child to uh, to help you bring them bring them upward and onward. So, uh, uh, and I was thinking of this when Gary was ministering. Uh, it's it's an in gathering, and it's uh, also a time, uh, as he said, of the feast of booths, is the, another name for it. Uh, and that's where they built the booths out of different kinds of branches. Every branch had its purpose in that booth. Uh, some were uh, to form the uh, foundation for it, the pillars of it on the corners, and then they would uh, interlace the more supple branches to form walls. Uh, and then the roof interlaced also. But you had to have all of the different uh, strengths and uh, of the branches. Uh, and, and I see that in the people of God. Uh, most people say, well, God doesn't want me for that because I'm, I'm not strong enough. Well, you know what? God needs those who are humble and uh, able. Uh, he doesn't necessarily always need somebody that's a lion or a pillar. He needs those who are able to uh, know where to fit in at with what God's doing, to be supple and to bend to his will. Uh, that's the old story of the Wild West where uh, it was so wild, they started sending in and appointing marshals and uh, Texas Rangers uh, and uh, territorial marshals that would go in and clean up these lawless towns. And uh, the outlaws had taken them over, and they were just uh, uh, treating the people uh, with violence and everything else, taking their money. So they, uh, they would appoint men that were on the same level as the outlaw, if not more mean than the outlaw. Uh, just think of uh, uh, Rooster Cogburn. 
and and uh, um, I've been watching a uh, historical western actually about uh, Bass Reeves, and uh, he was a black man, uh, and uh, he became I think uh, one of the very first Texas Rangers, and uh, but he wasn't a, a mean man, but he used his smarts and everything else to to you know to get the job done to bring the the outlaws in for uh for the judge to hang really <laughs> um and uh and i think of that in the uh, in the body uh gary and i had to come up in this word at a time where uh, you weren't treated very well people didn't like you and uh, uh, we didn't have that much fellowship across the country. So we had to uh, stick to our uh, guns with it. And there's been many a time that we've been sent in to clean out a church. Uh, really and truthfully, uh, I, I, I know, speaking for myself anyway, I've, I, I have cleaned out many a church. <laughs> and uh, uh, But what it was is that there were people in, in those churches that were abusing the people, for one thing, strong-arming the pastor, doing all the things wrong to make that their own little kingdom, and, uh, and making sure that they preached what they wanted them to preach. So they would invite one of us in, unbeknownst to them, we weren't being sent to be a blessing we were sent to be a curse in that way to where uh by the time we were finished with them they didn't have a mansion to uh dwell next door to jesus in uh they didn't have an eternal damnation they didn't have a rapture uh to save them from the earth uh and as a result a lot of people would leave and but the but what the Lord was doing is separating the wheat from the chaff, and there comes a time for that. There's a time where you have to have strong men and women to go in to the pulpit and bring forth the word, whether it makes you mad or glad, doesn't matter. It's what God wants ministered to you. It's what you must know. And uh, I've gotten mad a lot of times when I was coming up in the revelation. Uh, I got mad at everybody when they first started preaching reconciliation. Uh, I thought, oh, my God, they're all going to hell for preaching such a, a, an abomination. And uh, they'd preach it, and I'd get up right after them and send everybody right back. They'd get people out of hell, and I'd send them right back into hell. And uh, Charlotte and the other ministries put up with me doing that but they didn't change their ministry they didn't change their word they knew that eventually uh i would i would have a revelation of it and i did so that's that's the uh part that i i i always don't judge what god's doing or what he's saying because you don't ever know who god uh, is 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 wanting to deal with, but all, all, all through the progression of the Lord uh, in the spiritual manifestation of Christ, it seems like I fought every uh, every layer of it. I fought it, and then I'd come around to it. I fought it, then I'd come around to it. One good thing about that is that I didn't take man's word for it. That's very important, everybody not to take my word, Gary's word, Rob's word, Paula's word, any of our word, anybody you might hear, don't take their word for it. Uh, bring it before the Lord. Get the witness in your spirit, but honestly, bring it to the Lord and cleanse your mind out from everything you've ever heard before and read the scripture like as though you've never read it before. 
without all of these highfalutin intellectuals telling you what this means, what that means. Forget about the Greek, forget about the Hebrew, just, uh, just well, you can read the Amplified Bible as far as I'm concerned, uh, but you need to just take it before the Lord. Ask God, and he'll speak for himself with you. Now, it might be that God says, set it on the shelf. I'm not ready to reveal that to you. Amen. Put it on the shelf. Uh, and, and God will revisit that at the right time. Uh, but this is what I see the ingathering as, an ingathering of all kinds of different grains, animals, uh, um, corn, um, uh, wheat, and uh, all the other things, the wine, the oils, uh, everything that he brings into him, and then a people giving them a 10% of the goods to God. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, But that's a first fruit offering. A first fruit offering, meaning we put God first above everything else, we put God first. And if you'll live your life that way, if you'll live your life by putting God first instead of second or third or behind the kids or behind your church or behind your, uh, and you keep going down the line until there's God at the end of the line, if we start giving him the preem preeminence in our, in, in our midst, uh, then we will be brought into a place of blessings where God will bless you on the right hand and the, and the left hand. And he will chase you down from behind and take you over with his blessings. I believe that with all my heart. Firstly, first things first. And then God will bless the rest. And that literally is what happened in the fields when they would uh, give the uh, early fruit, the first things out of the ground and out of the animals, they would give that first things to the Lord first. Then God said that he would bless that which remained in the ground that had not come forth yet. He would, he would turn it into a bumper crop. Everything in the field would come forth if you gave him the first things. And that still applies. And Jesus was our first fruit. Amen. He was the first one that, that died and rose again. Hallelujah. And when God rose him up, uh, he said that, that, that he was the first raised from the dead, but uh, not the only one. Because many sons he would raise into glory. Hallelujah. So be sure of yourself in the Lord. This is the day of tabernacles. Uh, and Passover and tabernacles right now are, are together like David and Saul were together at one time. And then Saul gave way to David. Well, Passover and, and, and Pentecost is going to give way to tabernacles. But tabernacles is not going to be a mixed a feast. It's not going to have leaven in it. It's going to be the, the, the fire of God that is going to purge it and cleanse the offerings. Hallelujah. It, it is a feast of fire. Praise God. And, and that, this is our time uh, to let God burn away our dross and our tin and our hay and our stubble and all the, the earthly things in us, and let there be, remain those, those jewels and that gold and silver that are precious uh, metals unto the Lord. Amen. Faith and temperance and love and mercy and all those 12 fruits of the Spirit that uh, Gary was talking about. That is what we want to start to see in our lives. And we will see it because... The day of the Lord is upon us, and the change has already begun. And we're we're. It's not a thing of uh, like a uh, like Passover used to do with being saved, where you uh, confess the Lord, 
and then the rest of your life, you try chaining up the wolf in you. For the rest of your life, you're trying to become somebody else. And you find out you can't do it. So then you start hiding the wolf. Then you start putting up a false front to everybody. And you don't let everybody know what is, what is really you're wanting to do inside of you. And, uh, but the difference between tabernacles and that would be uh, uh, the kind of difference uh, between that and the wolf and the lamb, where the, uh, uh, the wolf is, is uh, alongside the lamb, the defenseless, tender, juicy lamb, and the wolf has no desire to kill and devour. Hallelujah. It, it has been changed into the nature of the lamb. Can you say amen? And that's what our nature is being changed into. From Adam unto Jesus, unto Christ. And, and the Adamic nature within us is, is that which will always fail, always uh, uh, be earthly minded and natural minded. But uh, we have an incorruptible seed within us. Oh, hallelujah. And we are going to take on not the form of, but the power thereof. Of Jesus, glory to God. I can't wait until we see Jesus walking around everywhere. Amen. Because that's what it's going to be like. There's going to be sons that look and act and sound just like Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and, and there is going to be a 144,000 to begin with. The first fruits unto the Lord. There's going to be 144,000 Jesuses, if I can put it that way. Hallelujah. But, what, but they don't give any glory to themselves. It's unto Jesus that they give the glory. But they look like him. They sound like him. They walk like him. It's because they have tabernacled with him. And that which was within them has come out to the outside and has come over them and they have been swallowed up by that victory. Can you say amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. So it is a new nature, uh, but it is a, a consuming nature. It works its way through our being until everything within us has been brought under its dominion, and the metamorphosis that takes place is from the worm unto the butterfly, from the man unto a man-god, uh, I mean a god-man, uh, from that which is lowly, earthy, dusty, unto that which is celestial, glorious, and ascending, hallelujah. That is the operation at work in you right now. So don't sell it short if you're not feeling anything yet. Hallelujah, because it will come about. The last thing to happen uh, is for you to actually see it in yourself. Uh, all the prior work will be on the inside, throwing over of your kingdoms that you've built on the inside of you. Jean Pratt got mad at me one time. Uh, uh, she told everybody at a meeting, uh, she said, I'm mad at Brother Bobby. She said, he wrote to me, it was my newsletter, and he told me I had a dragon. <laughs> Said, I don't have a dragon. <laughs> she's, she's sounding like a dragon as she's telling everybody she didn't have a dragon. And, uh, but I did. I told everybody, that's inside you. What you read in Revelation, that's right here. But everybody focuses on the dragon, the Antichrist, and all of that. Guess what else is in there, Rob? The lamb. Slain some before the foundation of the world. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. But, but he's going to get rid of the Antichrist, 
which is not a man. It's not Kissinger. I think we've pretty much proven that. Uh, it, it, it's not, uh, uh, oh, who's that? Uh, huh? I don't know who all else they've said it was. The Pope, of course. The Pope is supposed to have 666 on the inside of his crown. I don't believe that. Uh, it's not a man, dear ones. It's not a man. It's a spirit of Antichrist. And uh, it will take you over. Antichrist means literally instead of Christ. Instead of Christ. Doesn't mean I'm against you, Christ. It means it's presenting another Christ. Are you hearing me today? So, so don't think that it's some man out here that's, uh, that, that God's worried about. Uh, the spirit of Antichrist is that which denies that Jesus is come. So we all, at one time or another in our lives, were under the influence of an Antichrist, a nature that was... Uh, looking everywhere else but God, but Christ. And uh, uh, the false prophet, uh, you know, that's more than just somebody out here prophesying lies. It's your brain, it's your mind, it's your natural mind uh, that is false because it can't know the things of God. So it gets the things of God down to a realm in you that it can manage it. It hears the pure word of the Lord and then it becomes false because it has to find a way to handle that, to control that. So all of these things are, are different than what we've been taught uh, by our Bible teachers uh, in, in the old order. Uh, but but I, I want you to know some of these things about the, the feast that we are celebrating. It is a celebration. It's not a, it's not a woe, woe am I feast. It is a celebration, as all feasts are. They're festivals. And, uh, and, and as you go th uh, through, the, uh, through the feast, there will be those uh, certain places of refinement, of purification, but even in the midst of the fires, the scripture says you have your hands lifted up and glorifying the Lord because you're not against what God is doing in you. You know that it's bringing you into a place that's like him. Hallelujah. And that is the bottom line. Jesus wants you to become like him. Glory to God. Not to look like him with his features, natural features that you might think, but to look like him as far as your, uh, your character and your virtues and your love and your grace. Hallelujah. That, if you become love, you'll look just like God. Amen. Because he is love. So I pray that you will be able to get a hold of these things. They're realities that we need to put into practice. Uh, we, we, we need to find a way to incorporate within us these virtues. And, uh, and, and I believe God is doing that. I really do. Uh, so anyway, we appreciate everybody joining us. Has anybody else got a word uh, to share at all or don't want to cut anybody off? Hallelujah. Father, I ask you for uh, your hand to be laid upon us in this day. Lord, we don't know everything about this day, uh, but we trust you, Lord. You are the one, and you will not lead us astray. Lord, I ask you that this people will not be afraid to come to you, Lord, with their questions, and that they might get answers from you by your Spirit, Lord, that you, they will come to know your voice. They will come uh, and, and if an, uh, uh, another shepherd uh, tries to lead them astray, uh, they will 
uh, know your voice, and they will not follow another voice. Let it be their nature, Lord, to know your voice, to know your instruction, Lord. Hallelujah. May they glorify you, Lord, I pray, body, spirit, and soul. May they glorify you in all things in their life. May you be the first one they give praise to. May you be the first one they go to with their problems, with their illnesses, Lord. May you be the first one, Lord, to answer those requests. Hallelujah. All glory to God. But but I pray, Lord, that we will all mature in your ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ask you to provide for everyone financially, physically, spiritually, Lord, that we would all be blessed in the day of the Lord, that we would grow each day into that same image that we beheld in the glass of your, of your uh, 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 glory. And I ask you, Lord, that we will be found like you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you want to write to us, write to us at P.O. Box 0519, Dixon, Tennessee, 37056. Continue praying for Bobby Jean as she's up in Michigan. Uh, they are going to fix her car. They believe they know the, the, the reason for it. And uh, but it's going to cost her uh, quite a bit of money. Uh, but she's going to do it anyway because the car fixed. Uh, she won't be able to buy another car. Uh, you know, it's cheaper to get it fixed than it is to go out and look for another car. So uh, let's be praying for her while she she's facing an awful lot up there. Uh, it was going real smooth for a while, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it got pretty hairy for her. So let's lift her up. Hallelujah. Father, I ask you, Lord, that Bobby Jean will will, will feel the uh, support of her family around her, Lord, her natural family and her spiritual family. I ask you, Lord, that she'll stand the test and that, Lord, you will be with her every minute and that you, when she gets weary and, 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 uh, Uh, down, I'm asking you, Lord, that you will raise her back up into the heavenlies and that, Lord, you will give her the instruction uh, in every situation up there that, God, you've got her there for a purpose. And we know that the, the enemy is raging right now, but, Lord, set a standard up and around her against this flood. And we ask you, Lord, that she will come forth pure as gold. In your holy name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now be sure to tune in with Gary uh, and Paula on their Heavens on Fire uh, broadcast uh, Tuesdays at 7 uh, p.m. And uh, Darren uh, and Dana Best at The Church in uh, Morris, Morrisboro, North Carolina. And I'm not even going to try and tell you what night they're they're meeting. Uh, Gary uh, just about uh, wonders if he's got it right every time he says it. But uh, go on the church Facebook page, and it'll have the information on there. Or Darren Best, and and if you go to Darren Best, you can uh, send him a private message and get the information for the church there. It'd be a great place for you to visit. Or if you're in the area, it'd be a good place for you to attend because they preach this truth as good as anybody I've heard. And Darren is a powerful minister, and uh, we we know you'll be blessed if you'll go see him. Hallelujah. And I guess that's about it. We're praying, still praying, about an Easter meeting at Victory Temple, Bobby Jean's Church, up in uh, Southgate, Michigan. Uh, either uh, before or after Easter, the week before, the week after. Um, I'm kind of leaning after just to get it. Okay, that would be the week after. So that's tentative. Uh, April um, 5th, 6th, 5th, 6th, and 7th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
and we hope we get to see you there if we can pull this off. Uh, again, we don't have a large congregation to uh, to draw from and to say, oh, yeah, we can do that. But when you think about uh, you know, traveling that far and then the motels and, and then the food, uh, it gets pretty costly. But God has always supplied. So we'll never let that keep us from doing that. It's just the reason why I'm saying tentative is that we really want to make sure uh, before we go into that great of a commitment that we've heard from the Lord. Amen. So we're open to God, either yay or nay. But all I ever hear from God is yay and amen. Hallelujah. So, so we'll let you know when it's, uh, when it's solidified. Uh, all right. Uh, God bless you. We love you. Thank you for being with us. We really appreciate you and the Lord, fellowship with you. And uh, you mean an awful lot to all of us. And uh, we just want to tell you that you're loved here in Tennessee. Amen. God bless you.